All right, this is part four of linear regression. I'm going to focus on residual plots. Uh, bef so what we left off last time is we took our regression line and put it on top of a scatter plot. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to do a residual plot. But before I do that, I want to briefly walk you through what a residual is so you have some understanding. Now a residual is simply a difference of two numbers. You're just going to subtract two different numbers here. Now the observed y are the actual y values in your list. So this right here is my first point in my, of my 12 points. You know I have a list one of all my x values and my list two of all my y values. And it's just your observed y values minus the predicted y values. Now your line of best fit claims to be a predictor. It will predict the future, right? So the residual is just the difference of these two. So I'm going to show you how to calculate one residual by hand, and then you'll have an understanding what the plot is trying to uh, communicate. So uh, some textbooks use this, this little hat here. We call it Y hat, which is the regression line. Notice if I, this, this is my regression line. I rounded it off here. Your calculator, when we put it in here, carried it to like the 10 billionth digit here, but for ease here, I just went out to four digit places. If I take my original x value and I plop it into my line of best fit, it spits out this value here. Okay. Now this is the predicted value. This is my actual value. This is the one that I observed. This is the one that is predicted. So you would simply say that the residual for this one particular point is 1.5. Okay, so that is one residual. Now, if you're asked to calculate all the residuals, um, notice that there are 12 points in my data set here. That would take a long time to do by hand. What I want you to notice is that some points are above the regression line, some points are below the regression line. Okay, the points that are above the regression line will have a positive residual. The ones below the regression line will have a negative residual. And by definition, if you add up all the residuals, it's going to equal zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find the residuals um, in a list here. And then we're going to take that list and we're going to graph it. Uh, there is a program that you may have called Resid, which you can define this list as a Resid. And it will, with a one push of a button, it will calculate all the residuals. However, I do not like to do it that way for many reasons, which I don't want to share now. So I'm simply going to highlight list three, and I'm going to define this as a function of these lists. So I'm going to highlight list three, go to vars, because I want to access my y function, y1. Remember, y1 is our regression line, which is placed in here. So this is y1, OK? So go back to my list. Oh, I have to do that over again, no problem. So I'm going to define list 3 as y1, and I'm going to tell this to take all of these x values and plop it into my function. Now my x values is list 1, so I hit second L1. Now notice when I hit enter, these are all the function values. These are all the predicted y values. Now a residual is the difference of the observed Okay, minus the predicted, right? Well, here's my observed, my original y values, here's my predicted. So guess what? I'm just going to define list 4 as the difference of list 2 minus list 1. L2 minus L3. Enter. Now notice there's my 1.5 that I got by hand right here. See my 1.563? That's my residual that I did by hand for the first point value. Okay, now notice some are positive, some are negative. And this tells you how close to the regression line. So in other words, these two points here are the closest to the regression line. They have a very small residual. Now we're going to put this in a graph. Here we go. Now keep in mind that list four is our residual points. Okay, so we're going to clear out this and you're going to call it zero. Because the regression line or the residual plot is going to show how far away those points are from zero. Some are above, some are below. Okay, so we got zero here. Go to stat plot. It's turned on. 
Now this is saving my previous scatter plot. This is a scatter plot of my original X and my original Y's, but I want to do my scatter plot with my original X and my, res uh, my residual values, which is list four, okay? That's a key thing. So you have to change, you're doing a residual plot with your original X's, comma, your now new list, which is your residuals. And you can choose the mark that you want. Let's do plus signs this time. Now notice when I hit graph, it's kind of bizarre here because it still has my old window from my box plot, okay? So we're gonna to go to zoom stat, which is item number nine, and it's gonna configure a nice, pretty residual plot. Some points are above, some points are below. And these are all the residual values. This shows you how close those points are from zero. Now obviously if a residual is zero, it's more accurate.